Check this out guys, this is really cool. We've got a piece of software called Mesh Chat on the left hand side and it's connected to an R node, which is basically a lower node. And on the right hand side here, we've got a smartphone running an app called Sideband and another R node. Now, Mesh Chat can run on a PC, it can run on a Mac, it can run on basically anything, a Raspberry Pi, you name it. And it allows you to send pictures, voice, text, data, you name it, it can send it over a very low bandwidth connection, in this case, LoRa. So guys, today's video is gonna be about reticulum and a piece of software called Mesh Chat. So in the last video, you saw me set up a very basic reticulum system consisting of two R nodes. We've got one here connected to a smartphone running the sideband app, and we've also got another one up here. Now today, this one isn't actually connected to the second smartphone, it's connected to my Mac, which is running a piece of software called Mesh Chat. Mesh Chat is available from this link up here, which again, I'll put in the description, and you can basically download this for Mac, Windows, or Linux. So it'll basically run on anything. Yes, it'll work on a Pi. So once you've downloaded and installed Mesh Chat on your particular operating system of choice, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is take a freshly prepared R node. I've covered that in the last video. Basically, I'm using a Helltech Lower 32 V3 board here running the R node firmware, and it's pretty easy to install the R node firmware on these devices. But yeah, I'll leave a link to the previous video in case you wanna do that. But anyway, once you've got that sorted, you plug it into your computer using a USB-C lead in this case, make sure it's a data one, not just for power. And then we can head over to the Mesh Chat configuration to set up the R node. So to get this R node configured then, you wanna head over to interfaces on the left-hand side of Mesh Chat. Now, in the interface section, you can see we've got a whole host of different interfaces. Now this is the great thing about Mesh Chat because you can actually configure as many interfaces as you like. Um, so you can see here I've got obviously default interface which is just Ethernet and Wi-Fi. I've actually disabled that for now. Um, also I've got a radio, another radio interface here which is a DMR radio which I'm going to come on to in another video as well. Um, and then also I've got a Raspberry Pi node which is connected which can be connected to this instance of mesh chat um, as well again i'll come on to things like that later but but effectively to get an r node set up what you need to do is hit add interface then you can basically give your interface um, a name here so i'm just going to stick r node in there and then we can select r node interface um, the port we want is basically the usb port that the node is connected to so this one here for this particular computer. Uh, now, frequency-wise, we're using 867500. Um, be aware that this is actually, if you leave it like that, it'll actually be in kilohertz. So you've got to add a few more zeros and then you'll see this will move to megahertz underneath here. Um, now, this is a frequency we've kind of decided on using in the UK because we're allowed to use it with this particular bandwidth. The bandwidth we want to set is 125 kilohertz and the transmit power we're going to set is 22. Spreading factor we need to set as 9 and coding rate we need to set as, it's actually 5 but it says 4 colon 5. Once we've done that you can hit add interface and then basically what this will do is it will create a new interface um, as you'd expect but you will have to restart the Mesh Chat program to apply this. So I'm not going to do that because I've already got a R node in here anyway. But so when you hit restart, it will come back up and then this node that's connected by USB should spring to life and you should see the little bandscape thing scrolling along here. It's gone um, a bit funny on this one, but <laughs> it's, it's just basically a full line. But you should see something start moving on there and you'll also see that it says connected up here as well. So that will get you connected to your R node from Mesh Chat. And then from there, well, you can do what you like. You can basically send messages to other R nodes. You can do all sorts of things. So I'm going to take you through some of the features now of Mesh Chat. Right, so if we start with the messages section here, you can see we've got conversations and we've got announces. Now, remember in the last video, we have to announce our presence on the network um, to be able to be contacted and everything else. So we're gonna do that 
if we hit that, we'll actually see the this node start to announce itself on the network and you should get a couple of replies as well. I've got a few nodes around here. Um, so we, we might get you know more than one response um, coming back. But in this little drop down box below the announce button, we've actually got an automatic announce feature, which is which is pretty cool because it allows you to obviously just, you know, send out a beacon or effectively send a, send out a um, an announce every 15 minutes, which because there's not a lot of nodes around here, I mean, other than my ones, um, then I, I think this is quite a good idea because it will, it will obviously, you know, show up on people's lists a bit more frequently if you're trying to find local nodes. So I've got mine set to 15 minutes. This will change going forward as it gets busier, um, I'm sure. So that's that. So up here we can see that Andy Hartford Mobile, which is my other station, which we've got on this smartphone connected to this other Arno down here. And you can see that announce was about 44 minutes ago. And you can also see the um, signal to noise ratio as well. So you can see it's incredibly strong here, 10.25, because we're basically sitting right on top, of, um, on top of that node. So if I go into my sideband app, and just do an announce there, you should see that Hartford mobile node say, look, it updates a second ago, and it's saying it's direct because it's come straight over radio. We can also double click this and our message panel will appear so you can see all the messages I've previously sent, and we can also do a ping from here as well. So again, sending some data out, and then we get a ping response back with an RSSI. So this is where you'd see RSSI and your link quality and everything else. Um, there's not really enough room on this panel to add uh, you know, all the other, other things. So that's why it's kind of in this window here. So nice healthy signal here. And that is a way of pinging, obviously a ping in a note. Pretty cool feature that. The rest of the things on here are quite self-explanatory. You can basically type a message in here to be sent. Um, and it will just obviously go out. Sometimes you might see that try a few times. I think it tries up to seven times to send um, a message out. Uh, it obviously depends on you know how strong the radio link is between the two R nodes you're trying to connect. But you know obviously we've seen crazy distances recently um, for LoRa because of the propagation that's been happening in the UK. Um, you know 100 kilometers, 200 kilometer ranges have been achievable with this. The other features down here, you've got a file send feature, so you can send files. Um, you don't really want to be sending large files, definitely not, <laughs> because it's a quite a slow connection. Um, so keep the files very, very small. And that brings me on to something else. Let's just move this window over so we can get the full um, panel in here. Basically down here, you've got add files. You can add images. Um, now, this is a really clever feature, and it's actually just been recently added. Um, it will scale your images. Whatever you start with as an image, you could start with a large image. It will resize them and basically dither them down to something really small as a file size, so it can be sent over, um, you know, over low or, or the low uh, bandwidth connection. Of course, if you've got a Wi-Fi, if you're using this over Wi-Fi, um, you could actually, you know, send the original quality. You could send what you like because it's going to be going at full speed over a, a Wi-Fi network. That's the great thing about Reticulum. You can use any sort of network connection to to do this, not just not just LoRa. So yeah, basically you can pick a low quality image and then just you know pick something from here like we did earlier, and it will basically just um, it will just add this into your into your sort of message there. Then you've actually got to type in something in this. Uh, in the message field for it to actually send and then we'll see here there you go it's sending and this will send quite quick because it's obviously been compressed massively um, great device that t5 um, and uh, ripple has got a really nice firmware uh, for this as well and um, it might or might not have mesh tastic compatibility <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a story for another day. So that's done and we should see, you can see the activity on there um, chinking through. Incidentally, this band scope is very, very clever. Um, it actually shows you anything that's happening on the band, not just LoRa. So it's a really good way of seeing interference. Um, you know, on this line here, you can see here it's not particularly great. It's, it's scrolling along, but the noise floor is quite high because I'm by the TV. Um, TV by the computer monitor screen, so you can see it. It might get worse if you hold it near a uh, near a computer or something like that. So this is really really cool, and this is one of the ways that it actually does a kind of listen before transmit um, kind of system. So you know it won't transmit if it hears something else going on on the band, 
and this is this is something unique to um, the R node. Um, as far as I know, Mestacit doesn't do this. So just bring my other node and sideband into shot here, so you can see here that message was received loud and clear. Um, RSSI minus seven and eleven dB of SNR. And you can see the quality of it. Oh, blimey, it looks terrible. I'm just looking on the screen. Terrible as in from this camera because it's just not picking up the screen of the phone um, very well. But you can read everything on there. You can read the text. It's absolutely fine. So other things you might want to do is set your identity. You can just put like a name in there. So obviously you can, people can identify you on the on the network. Um, as you can see here, I've just got Andy Hartford Mac. But at the moment, you can't really modify your picture from... Uh, mesh chat but you can actually do it from sideband you can see i've got this little alien logo for me on there and that's i'll i'll go through that in sideband i think in, in another video because there's a few little settings you have to um do to actually get that to, to sort of show up um but yeah it looks quite cool so next on the list you've got nomad network which is another system which is really really interesting um, again I'm going to cover that in a another video but basically it allows you to sort of host your own pages just another very very cool way of doing things so we've seen interfaces the network visualizer is a pretty cool feature it allows you to sort of see your network in a kind of picture diagram which is pretty pretty good um, I think they'd be great to have some some sort of extra information on here as well if you hover over these you can actually kind of get um, information but um, sort of signal to noise ratio maybe like forward and back I don't know there might be a way of doing that sort of thing in there um, all this stuff is being developed pretty quickly at the moment um, by <laughs> the main man Liam um, over there uh, so it's yeah it's been amazing the amount of work that's that's been put into this so kudos to you mate and it's been great testing all this stuff so next up in the menu you've got a tools menu now this is pretty cool. This allows you to almost like self-host a flashing the Flasher website that we used obviously uh, in the other video to to obviously flash the the nodes. So so you can actually do that from here. It just fires up a browser and and opens up, and you can actually flash your nodes here. That you, so you can select lower thirty two and all of that from there without actually touching the internet, which is kind of really uh, really what this is kind of all about. Um, ping feature as well you've got a ping feature so that kind of does a continuous ping um, obviously you know you shouldn't just leave it pinging away but it's quite good to uh, you know if you're testing out your network and you want to sort of see uh, you know what the connections like and everything like that it's quite a, quite a useful feature that and then down to the settings menu you've got light theme dark theme if you want to change that um, community interfaces so there are some interfaces which basically you can configure um, here like if you want to connect to one of these servers then you can actually kind of use this over a um, I think it's the TCP connection basically to to get a quick you know test with reticulum and just chat to other like-minded people not on not via radio but just using the internet so they're there if you need them you can add your own as well then we've got some message configuration settings auto resend which is pretty cool um so if you basically disappear off the network and that you know you won't be able someone couldn't message you uh if you've sent the message from sideband it will try uh to resend it to to that um, particular station when you announce their announced packet has been heard so that's pretty cool um resending with attachments that just obviously enables attachments on that feature as well um, and then you've got this other feature here which is also send to propagation node propagation nodes are basically um it's part it's a configuration you can have which allows you to host almost like a message server on on here so you could run on this instance of mesh chat you could run like a a message um, server it will store the messages and then other people can you know if they're not available when that message was sent they can periodically poll this for uh, just poll the network for a message you do that by hitting this sync messages button up here and it will just it'll ask the propagation nodes for messages and then download them so that's pretty pretty useful but this kind of does the a similar thing i feel now so yeah anyway that's a, that's there and i have actually got this turned on on this node so it will store messages on here and people can check if they've missed any messages which is, which is quite cool that's the sync interval for the syncing of the messages i believe so that's it for the for the settings on there so there are some other features like this one here you've got calls you can actually make calls over lower which is pretty insane um and it does work it's it's absolutely madness how that how that even works but it does 
Um, and then you've also got, you know, things like, so you can make a call from here as well um, and, and do that. But I mean, I just love the features here with, you know, having a desktop app, it's very, very simple to set up. All you've got to do is just literally get a, you know, a mesh chat instance running on, on your PC or your Mac or whatever, Raspberry Pi, plug an R node in and that is it. You are good to go. It's very, very simple, um, very, very simple to set up. So guys, that is that. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, if you've got any questions, yeah, ping me in the in the comments. Probably the best place to have a look is the um, is the Discord, uh, which I'll leave links to as well. And um, then you can sort of you know join in the kind of massive chat that's been going on on there. Um, you know, with with all all of this. So yeah, that's it for this one. Catch you next time.